Good morning, church, and welcome to the first Sunday of 2021. Come on, join me as we worship our King this morning. Amen.
you for your mercy, Jesus. We thank you for your mercy, Jesus. We've come to praise you, Jaira. We've come to praise you, Deliverer. We've come to praise you, Jesus. We've come to praise, praise you, Lord. Se paga mi subukulubako. He's been so good to us. His mercy. Because it's good. Our God is a good God. Our God is a faithful God. His mercy. His mercy, it endures forever. We praise Him because the Lord is good. And His mercy, His mercy shall to you, Jesus. Surrender all to you.
in awe of your greatness in awe of your grace in awe of your love we stand in awe of you lord this time around you will make a way this year Lord we believe this is the year that you will turn things around we thank you Jesus we give you all the praise and the glory belongs to you way maker miracle maker we welcome you Jesus we welcome you Holy Spirit in this place your presence is everything to us Holy Spirit it is everything to us we know that we are nothing without you you are the vine and we are the branches. We depend on you for everything right now, Lord. We are so glad that we are here and you have made the way that we are here in 2021. And that, Lord, we will serve you as you build your church. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Belongs to you, King of Kings. We stand here, Lord, and stay. You are in control, Lord. That's what comforts us, is that you are still on the throne. You are still in control. Give you praise, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, King of Kings, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. Isn't it great that you made it? You are here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are so happy that you could join us. You are here. It's the 3rd of January, 2021. And we praise God for this day. We praise God for this year because our God is able. He is able. He has made the way. That's why you are here and you are in his plans. You are in God's plans. If you are not, you won't be here. You are in God's plans. God is not done with you. That's why you're still here today. All of us who are here, all of us, those who are watching us through whatever platform, God has a plan for your life. He's not done with you. It doesn't matter what you went through. It doesn't matter things that you did not complete, things that you did not do. You were hoping to do things that you were hoping to accomplish. You did not. But all we know is that God has a plan for your wife, for your life, and he has not accomplished that plan. And he will accomplish that plan as you allow him today. Isn't it great? It's so great that we made it. It's so great that this time around, we will surrender to him and allow him to have his way in us. If he can have his way in us, we will do better, we will not regret, because he has all the world in his hand. He has everything in his hand. With, today, I'm saying God is in control. My topic is God has not lost control. He has not lost control. It may feel as if he has lost control. You look at uh, the things that happened last year are still continuing to happen this year. You may look at yourself and look at everything and say, maybe God has lost control. No, he has not lost control. He is God who is still in control. He is in control. That's why we believe that his plan will come true and he is building the church. You, the part of the church, wherever you are, God is building his church, and he's saying that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church that God is building. 
He is building the church. Jesus Christ is building his church to them. As we're talking about God and his control, he is indeed in control. I want to put my emphasis today on spiritual slumber and spiritual blindness. Those two things are very important because if you ought to do better this year, you ought to be awake spiritually. Be awake spiritually. If you have any, uh, I know you usually have um, uh, the resolutions for the year. I, I don't see a lot of it now. People seem to be skeptic of whatever is happening. they not making any plans. But you know what? If you have any uh, resolutions, things that you want to change, things that you want to improve your life, please improve your spiritual maturity, your relationship with God. Improve your spiritual uh, uh, spir your, your spirituality so that you may be connected to God. It's important. Please reject with everything you have the spiritual slumber. Don't sleep. It's not time to sleep. It's time to be awake. When we're awake, we know that God will show up. It's very important. Now, it's very dangerous for you to be sleeping in the spirit. It's very dangerous for you to be only aware of the things that are happening in the natural realm. As we know that things happen in the spirit before they can happen in the, in the natural realm. So we ought to be aware of what is happening in the spirit. Isn't, isn't interesting that even Jesus himself, if we read from the book of uh, John chapter 16, verse 7, he says, it is your advantage that I live. He was about to live. Let's remember that Jesus was limited by time. He was limited by place because he was in Israel or in Palestine today, and he could not reach everybody. And he told them that, guys, it is, it is your advantage. It is to your advantage that I live, and if I live, I will send someone who will be omnipresent, the Holy Spirit. He will be everywhere. You will have access to him all the time. You will have him all the time. I know people back in the days, they loved him. They all wanted Christ to themselves, but he was so limited because he came as a man. That's why it's important that we understand the importance of being spiritually awake, understanding what is happening in the spiritual realm, so that we're not taken by surprise. The Holy Spirit puts it clear, in fact, Jesus puts it clear here, that I will send you another comforter. He will tell you things to come. The Holy Spirit will reveal things. We will see things better. We will be better prepared. Don't you want to be better prepared? Surely you want to be better prepared. You don't want to be taken by surprise, things happening that you don't know, but you want to be better prepared. When you are better prepared, you do better as a child of God. God will be on your side if you are awake spiritual. I want us, we're going to look at, very importantly, from the book of First Kings. The book of First Kings, if you read the whole chapter 6, the, the book of First Kings, it was about uh, the prophet Elisha. And prophet Elisha there, you know, as a man of God who uh, succeeded prophet Elijah. Now, this is about prophet Elisha and his servant. And what is happening here, if we read the whole chapter and the whole story, we're, gonna, we're just going to read verse 14 and 15 now. But just to give you what, uh, to give you the background of the story here, these guys, uh, the prophet was troubling the Syrian people, and now they wanted to attack him. They wanted to attack him by night. The Bible tells us, if we read from, the, um, from verse 14, it says that, therefore he sent the king of Syria horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night. So he wanted to surprise them. You know, the devil sometimes he wants to surprise us. Like Azusa, Simba, Satan. He will come by night, he will come. That's why the Bible says that he is like a, a lion who is looking for someone to devour. So he wants to give us that surprise. When we are not ready, spiritually, when we are sleeping in the spirit, although we are awake in the natural, but when we are sleeping in the spirit, it's very dangerous when the devil attacks. See, so here, we see the devil attacking them, the Syrian army, or the, the commander sending the army to attack uh, Elisha and his servant. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army. Now this guy is waking up. Now suddenly he saw, he's seeing the army all around. They surrounded them. They did not stand a chance. They could not escape. They could not fight. They did not stand a chance against the Syrian army. 
Just think about it. And what is happening? Look at this guy. Look at him. Because now we're going to see two things. The reaction of Elisha and the reaction of the servant. And I want, I want you to look at yourself as a child of God. How will you respond this time around? How do you plan to respond? Your position in the spirit will determine how you respond to the attack and the surprises of the devil. Because we know that the devil will attack. We know that it's the question of time. When will he do that? We know that he is planning for your fall. He is always doing it all the time. Now here, here is the servant of God, the servant of uh, the man of God, of Elisha. Now, what is his response to all of the attack, to all of the army, the army of the armies of the Syria who were surrounding them? And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Th look, look at him. He's saying, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Now this guy could only see what was happening in the natural. This is a, a, a response of people who see things in the natural. That's how they respond. What shall we do? There was no God in whatever he was saying. It was about him and the man of God. Man of God, what shall we do? Because he could only see in the natural. As much as you are in the natural, the Bible says that we are in the natural, we are in, in the flesh, but our warfare is not in the flesh. Think about it. If the Bible says that although you live in the flesh, your war or what you're fighting is in another world, in another realm, you ought to understand that realm. You ought to be there so that you may understand, you may respond, you may fight. Now, this guy did not see the other realm. He saw only one realm, the, the realm that you can see with your natural eyes. All of us who can see with the natural eyes, and I can tell you today that your eyes gives you and, and, and what is happening in the natural realm. It gives you an idea what is happening. If you are blind, you won't see what is happening in the natural. You may hear perhaps, but you will not see. So your eyes must not only be limited, you must also open your spiritual eyes. The eyes in the spirit, it is important. For us to do better this year, we ought to open those eyes in the spirit. We ought to allow God to show us things that we can, only the spirit of God can do that to us. So now I want us to look at this. This is very serious. I know what you are facing as a child of God. You may be facing the illness and seeing it in the natural. Oh, what am I going to do with what I'm facing? My, the illness that I'm suffering in. What shall I do with the trouble that I'm facing? What shall I do with all my failures? What shall I do with all the money problems that I'm facing? Do you see that only in the natural? Then you are in trouble because we know that God has intervention. And the intervention of God can only be seen by those who can see things in the spirit. I know you may think that God doesn't care. This guy, uh, the, the, the servant to the man of God, thought maybe God doesn't care. How can God allow these guys to surround us? How can he allow these guys? Maybe this was also the question that people were asking when the king decided to throw Daniel into the den of lion. How can God allow that? But God had a plan. You know, Basilani Uchiko will always have a plan. The Bible puts it clear. We as what? In the world, we'll have tribulation. Jesus, that's what he said. We will have tribulation. He is not saying we're not going to have trouble. We will have trouble. We will have tribulation. But the Bible says that we ought to overcome that tribulation. We will have tribulation. Jesus never said that he will block all things not to come true to us. He will block all the temptation. He will block all the attack of the devil. He said that, let us be strong and be of a good cheer. So now, if you look at the, the, the servant here, he did not see what was important. Oh, as a child of God, I pray this year that you may see the salvation of the Lord, that you may see beyond the trouble that you are facing, that you may see beyond the failure that you are facing, that you may see beyond... All your troubles, you may see the salvation of the Lord. Now, let's look at what is happening here. This guy was afraid. He was frightened. He could not see what, he, what they were going to do. He could not see the way out. You know, sometimes you are in this trouble. You don't see the way out. You're not alone in that. But please allow God. Don't take God out of the formula. When this guy said, what shall we do, man of God? He already took God out of 
all the solution that they were pla- they, that they were having, all their plans did not all the plans that he had did not include God. Please, in everything, know that God is in control and God is entrusted in making sure that you do better as a child of God. So when you are surrounded, what what do you do? You want to fight. You want to run. But in this regard, these guys were cornered. Let's take another example. If you look at the Israelites when they were released by the Egyptians and they were on their way to the promised land and suddenly these Egyptians were pursuing them and suddenly they did not have way out. There was really no way out. There was no way they would escape the Egyptians. Guess what happened? God was there. God was there in the spirit and he knew what could happen if these guys will only see what is in the spirit in the spirit. Luckily for them that Moses was there and Moses knew what God was capable of. They were complaining of it. I can see the Israelites when they were about to cross the Red Sea. I can see them complaining. What are we going to do? Let's surrender. We should have gone back to them. We shouldn't have left Egypt. You know, they, it was all the complaints because they did not see. They were blind. They were sleeping spiritual. Can you see now that it's so dangerous to be sleeping in the spirit? But to be awake in the spirit, it means that you're going to see things that other people don't see. You're going to see God himself. The Bible says God is a spirit and all those who come to him must come to him in the spirit. We cannot approach God when we are carnal. We approach God when, when we are in the spirit. I like Paul when he speaks to the Galatians in the book of uh, Galatians chapter 5. He's saying to them, be in the spirit. Don't be in the natural of don't be carnal because when you are carnal it will bring a lot of trouble to you but when you are in the spirit you are able to see God you are able to communicate with God you are able to see better you have a better view now when we're talking about being in the spirit we're talking about the better view and the better view that Elisha had we're going to read the scripture where we know that Elisha had the better view he had all the better view that's why he was chilled that's why he was not worried. That's why the Bible said, be anxious for nothing. You know why? The Bible says you should be anxious for nothing. It says, be anxious for nothing, but trust in God. Put your trust in God. It says, but in prayer and all supplications. How do you do prayer? You do prayer in the spirit. The supplications in the spirit. Now the Bible is, Paul is telling us that all we got to do is to approach the spiritual realm and speak to God and present ourselves to God and we will be free from our worries. But if you are in the you carnal or you are in the natural, you cannot go into the spiritual realm, then you should be worried. You should be worried because you're going to make all the wrong decisions and all the wrong actions. But if you see what God is about to do, you will be good, you will be chilled, you won't be worried. Now, if we look at, also we look at Paul here, uh, if we read from the Second Corinthians chapter 2, Second Corinthians chapter 12, in fact, verse 17, reading from Amplified Bible, it says, because of the surpassing greatness and extraordinary nature of the revelation which I received from God for this reason, to keep me from thinking of myself as important, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to torment and harass me, to keep me from exalting myself. Now, this is Paul here. He's saying something happened to me. God allows something to happen to me. And I, if you read just chapter, verse 6, it, he, it's, it's where he complained that, Lord, please remove all of this from me. And God said, I am in control. I am in control. I've allowed this to happen to you. I am in control. It was the same story with Job when God allowed the devil, gave the devil a leeway so that the devil may attack Job. God said to Job, I am in control. I am in control. May we learn that God is in control. You know, if we are able to hear him, if he can communicate, can you imagine Paul here? He was worried. But when God said, I am in control, Paul, I know what is happening. And Paul was relieved. You will be relieved as a child of God if you can hear that God is in control. We know that God is in control. He is in control. He is our God who will never leave us nor forsake us. 
Now, Paul was in this situation, and it was beyond his ability, but God was in control. When you are awake spiritually, you tend to learn that God is in control. In your situation, in your anxiety, in your sickness, you learn to know that God is in control. In your failures, you learn to know that God is in control. As long as you have communication with him, as long as you have access with God, you will be secured. You will know that he is in control. Now, if we look at the dangers of spiritual blindness here, we look at the Israelites here. Uh, 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 Israelites, when God said, cross over Jordan, why did he say let them cross over Jordan when these guys crossed over in fact, they sent the spy to go spy the land, and when they spy that land, they saw the danger there. But when God said, cross, guys, go, he meant that, you know what, I took care, or I will take care of your trouble. The trouble that you are about to meet in the promised land, I have already made the plan. But these guys did not know. They did not see. See the salvation of the Lord. You can only see the salvation of the Lord in the spirit, not in the natural. So you, 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 I, I wonder what Caleb and Joshua saw that other people did not see when they went to spy the land. Remember when they came back, they said, hey guys, we are ready. We are ready. Let us go at once and possess the land. Did they see the giants? Yes, but I believe they saw beyond the giants. Let us see beyond our trouble. Let us see beyond the giants that you are facing, beyond your sickness, beyond your anxiety, beyond your all troubles. See the salvation of the Lord because God is good and he will come true. That we know that God will come true. I believe this time around this year, if we may just tap in the spirit, be in his presence, be like Paul who said, in all these things, I want to be with him. I want to know Christ. Knowing Christ, the one who is in the spirit, that means you will walk in the spirit. As you walk in the spirit, you will know him and you will know the power of his resurrection. The power that raised him from the death. Think about that power. When Christ was hanged on the tree and all the enemies and even the devil looking at him and say, it's done, you are done. I believe that the devil is looking at you today and he's saying, you are done. But I want to tell you that you are not done because God has created the way out for you. God is here to make the way. He's here making the way for you. So now if we look at the spiritual blindness, the Israel made all these wrong decisions and God said, cross over. They did not cross over. Why didn't they cross over? They did not see the, 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 the Lord's way. They did not see the salvation of the Lord. They did not tap into the power of his resurrection, that power that raised Christ from the dead, the unseen power, the, the, the unseen intervention of our God. Don't you be like the Israelites who refused to cross over Jordan because they were afraid. They did not see the salvation of the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord. This time around 2021, we will see the salvation of the Lord. We will be awake spiritually. No spiritual slumber. No spiritual blindness. Because it's so dangerous if you don't see what God is about to do. In closing, I want to read the scripture. I want to read the scripture that is so important for us about Eli, about Elisha. What was his response? Now, if we read from the book of 2 Kings, if we read from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, 2 Kings, chapter 6, verse 16. Now, this guy came and said, what shall we do, Lord? He did not include God in all his plans. And here is Elisha here. Elisha answered and said, do not be afraid. This is my message to you. Do not be afraid. You have sickness. Do not be afraid. You have whatever trouble. Do not be afraid. Why? This is not just a wishful thinking that things will just be better for you. But there is a power. There is a reaction power. There is unseen power that is at play that will change your situation there is a power that is at play that will bring your breakthrough now elijah is saying do not be afraid for those who are with us oh this guy did not see those he went out and when he looked he only saw all the danger this is what you're seeing today you see the danger this is what you're seeing today you see your illness this is what you see today all the trouble 
Now, look at Elisha here. He's saying, do not be afraid because those who are for us are more than those who are against us. He's saying, those who are with us are more than those who are, who are with them. He's saying, our army is greater. It is greater. The, the, the servant did not see that. It did not have that revelation that the army was greater. It was greater. It was greater. The army today that is for you is greater. That's why Paul said that the one who is in, in us is greater. Yes, indeed, is greater than the one that is in the world. He is greater. He is greater. Look at what the man of God is saying. This is my prayer today. To all you Rock Cape Town members, the people, our friends who are watching us through these platforms, it is my prayer today, the prayer that Elijah prayed for the servant. If we read verse 17, Elijah, then Elijah prayed and said, Lord, please open the eye that he may see. This is my prayer today, that the Lord may open your eyes. That the Lord may, whoever you are, that the Lord may open your eyes. I know you might be complaining like this servant, you may be afraid. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes, not your physical eyes, not your natural eyes, but your spiritual eyes. Let the Lord open those eyes. It is my prayer today that your eyes will be opened. This is a prayer of Elisha to the servant. Let God open those eyes. Oh, glory. Glory, this is a time that those eyes will be opened today. Let those eyes be opened. He said, Lord, open the servant's eyes. And he saw. And behold, oh, when you open those eyes, you will see. It will be something bigger that you've never seen before. When you finally entering the spiritual realm and seeing, when you're finally waking up spiritually, when you're finally waking up from your slumber, you will see the salvation of the Lord. And now the seven see, what, what did you see? And the Bible says that, behold, the mountain was full of horses. Barcelona, there is a great army, great army, greater army than the path you are facing, greater army than what you are facing today. This servant of the Lord saw the great army, saw the salvation of the Lord. It was today, this is my prayer. Oh Lord, let it be that in 2021, you will be better spiritual, you will see better. You won't only see the trouble. You won't be that negative person. Be thou art transformed by what you see, by the word of God. Be thou art changed by the word of God, by what you see in the spirit, the salvation of the Lord. I know when certain king in Israel, they were in trouble, also surrounded. And God said to that, you know what? Just prepare, go into the battle. And that's King Jehoshaphat. And he said to him, and see, he said, go and see the salvation of the Lord. Today is all about the salvation of the Lord. It's all about God saving you, saving you from your trouble, saving you from your worries, saving you from your sicknesses, saving you. It is our God. Open your eyes, your spiritual eyes today. Let you open your spiritual eyes today. Let those spiritual eyes be open in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. If you are watching with me, please, I want you to celebrate today because God is about to do greater things, greater. Greater is the one that lives in the inside of us than the one that lives in the inside of this world. He is great. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Come on, if you, if you can, wherever you are, will you stand on your feet and begin to worship with us? Begin to worship. Begin to tap into the Spirit today. Because that's where your salvation is. Your salvation is in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>
in closing if you are watching wherever you are you need him you need the salvation of the lord i want to pray this prayer with you if you are watching or you are with us here you want to receive jesus as your lord and savior it begins there it begins the road to salvation the road to victory begins with jesus if you are here you say it's me i want to receive jesus as my lord and savior i want you to pray this prayer with me say lord jesus i come to you today i know that i'm a sinner today i want to give my life to you i want to surrender everything that i have and receive you as my lord and savior i ask you to forgive all my sins wash me in your precious blood i receive you as my lord and savior if you pray that prayer wherever you are please let us know that we may continue to preach the gospel to you, that you may continue to pray for you you have made the right decision the decision you have made will open up the way for you god will open up the way for you he will not leave you nor forsake you open your spiritual eyes it begins today in jesus mighty name amen